fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's what the happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties, and the do 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 and okay. Okay. Yep, take Mickey Mantle, born in Oklahoma. Start with the New York Yankees. From out west, where a man's a man. And what a man is Mantle. Say, Mickey's been eating Wheaties for years. Now listen, here's another champion with plenty of zing in his swing. Zing! That's a service ace for champion Pancho Gonzalez, a native Californian. He hits them hard, he makes them swish. And in the morning, enjoys his dish of Wheaties. Sure, lip smack and taste tickling, rib sticking good. And there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hooray! For a long time, the Lone Ranger and Toto had been on the trail of Moose Jackson and his two pals. For a few weeks, they lost track of the notorious highwaymen. Then, unexpectedly, Toto had a stroke of good luck. He hurried from Boone City to the masked man's camp to report. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 city. King Sonny. Yes? Me in town. See two feller. Two we want. One named Stacy, other half-breed. That's the case, Toto. Moose Jackson himself must be nearby. That's right. Me sit near Crooks and Cafe. Hear them talk soft. Them plan stage hold up. Stop them westbound today near Red Rock. Today? Ah. The stage is due in town in less than an hour. We'll pass Red Rock in less than 20 minutes. Here, Silver. We go back to town, get sheriff. We take time for that. Moose will have looted the stage and escaped. We'll have to handle this ourselves. Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. With never a thought that the odds were three to two, the Lone Ranger led the way along a mountainside, then cut toward the valley at an angle. Rounding a turn, he saw the landmark called Red Rock, and nearby stood the halted stage. The Lone Ranger began firing from the saddle before the outlaws could sight their guns. His first bullet struck the half-breed in the leg. The second brushed Moose Jackson's gun hand and disarmed the leader. The third outlaw was so surprised that he turned his back to the stage driver to face the oncoming horseman. The driver seized the opportunity to slug him from behind. The fight was over when the masked man and Toto drew rein. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, mister, that mask makes you look like another crook, but you seem to be on my side. <coughs> hey, where'd that come from? Behind the red rock. <laughs> we had an ace in a hole, mister. Go on, Joe, let him have it. Drop him. Drop that gun. You're coming for my rifle. I'm holding a gun on that rock. Show yourself to fire the rifle and I'll get you. No, shoot him, I tell you. That's an order. I'm coming for you. Are you going to wait to face me? Or move into view where my partner can shoot you. Either one, mister. I'm going to surrender. I couldn't shoot anyone. The Lone Ranger thought it was a trick and was prepared for fast gunplay. He was therefore surprised to find the man called Joe with his hands at shoulder level. He was even more surprised to see a man whom he knew by reputation. Joe Marbury. Yes, that's right. But you, that mask, are you... Had... Joe, you've been one of the leading men in Boone City. You seem to know me. You and Sheriff Perkins have been friends for years. Yes, it's going to be tough on poor old Sam to jail me, but at least you can tell him I didn't kill you when I had the chance. Marbury, I I can't believe you're an outlaw. I want to learn more about the situation before we bring in the sheriff. 
the stagecoach reached Boone City, the driver told Sheriff Perkins about the holdup. The lawman listened attentively. Hmm. You, uh, you said there was a fourth member of the gang behind Red Rock. Who was he? I don't know. He was left behind the rock. I didn't see him at all. What? Well, I'll get on the trail. I'll pick up the tracks at Red Rock and follow them. Not going alone, are you, Sheriff? Going alone, I'll have a better chance of sneaking close to the place. When I locate the varmints, I'll come back for a posse. The sheriff had no trouble finding horse tracks at Red Rock and following them across the valley to a woods. When he saw a small shack through the timber, oh, oh. he dismounted and proceeded on foot. He saw three men sitting on the ground, their backs securely tied to trees. Gun in hand, he came close to the open door of the shack. He could see Tonto in the masked face of the Lone Ranger. There was another man in the shack, but his back was turned. The sheriff couldn't see his face. Then, as the masked man saw the sheriff, Perkins cried out, Get him up, you're covered! I've been expecting you, sheriff. In fact, I left a trail that you could follow. Uh, never mind that. Get those hands up. And you, mister, turn this way. The men who tried to rob the stagecoach are tied and waiting for you outside. There were four men in that gang, and the fourth sits right there with his back to me. Turn around. All right, Sam. Joe. Joe Marbury. You working with crooks? Sheriff, I wanted you to come here so we could discuss Joe Marbury before he's taken into custody. This was his first job with those crooks. He did nothing but hold their horses. He's sorry he joined Moose Jackson's gang. Joe, my best friend. Why, we've been pals for years. What happened to you, Joe, after you left town a few months ago? I'll take that gun, Sheriff. Hey, now, that's better. I'll return your gun later. All right, you got the jump on me. But I can still ask questions. Joe, tell me about yourself. Well, Sam, I was just drifting through the hills. I was hungry. I found three men camped, and they took me in and fed me. So I swung in with them. I cooked, took care of the horses. But Sheriff, when the showdown came, he couldn't shoot me to save his outlaw pals. That's why I brought him here. I, I wanted to talk to him. You came too soon. Now I have to arrest him. I guess you'll have to, Sam. You can't jail Moose and the other two without jailing me. I'll take charge of Moose Jackson and his pals. You could jail them only for attempted robbery. In Garson County, they're wanted for robbery, a more serious crime. I'll take them there and turn them over to the law. Joe Marbury isn't wanted there, so I'll leave him here with you. I, I... You can say the masked man took the crooks away from you. It will be the truth. Say, I begin to savvy. <laughs> Your job, Sheriff, is to see that Joe Marbury doesn't drift again. He needs a home, a job, a chance to live. I'm sure you'll make the most of it. Just six months after their trial and conviction, Moose Jackson and his pals walked out of jail free men. They camped in the hills near the county line while they studied the situation in nearby communities. Boys, I talked to some gents from Boone City and found out a few things about Joe Marbury. He's a guard at the Boone City Bank. Huh? He sits at the door with a shotgun in case there's trouble. Sheriff Perkins got the job for him. Ah. It's mighty funny we were marched to Garson County for that old job instead of facing trial for the stage holdup. I figured it was because the sheriff didn't want to involve Joe Marbury. It sounds like good reasoning, Moose. If I'm right, we'll cash in and get square with Joe at the same time. Break camp, boys, and get ready to try. Sheriff Perkins was at his desk that evening. He had been working overtime and was about to put the work away when the door opened and his old friend Joe Marbury walked in. Well, Joe, I'm glad to see you. Sit down and talk for a spell. Well, thanks, Sam. Today I lugged the payroll money for the mines over from the express office. That was a pretty big responsibility. I, I was mighty proud to be trusted that way. Why, thunderation, Joe, why shouldn't you be trusted? I remember the day when you could buy and sell any man in this town. Someone has to carry money. Why shouldn't you be the one? I... That windy. What's the matter? I thought I saw a fish outside the window. Pitch dark out there. Can't see a thing. But for a minute, I... I was sure I saw a fish looking in. It's gone now. There's no one out there. Sit down, Joe. Take it easy. Sam, how, it, how long will Moose and his pals stay in the Carson County Jail? Two to five years. Why? Then I... I guess it was just my imagination. It, it must have been. 
I, I thought I saw a moose's face outside that window. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Jenny is ten, and is she good? She's skip rope champ of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. 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 That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O, and you'll agree. You'll like that delicious toasted oat flavor, and Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowlful, add good fresh milk, dig in, and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfast every day with delicious Cheerios and milk and get that good go power. Then folks will say... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue... When Joe Marbury was in the sheriff's office, he thought he saw Moose Jackson peering in the window. Tonto had been in town to make inquiries. He, too, had seen the crook. Later in camp, he reported to the Lone Ranger. The masked man and Tonto picked up Moose Jackson's trail near town soon after daybreak and followed it through a woods and across a level open stretch to a huge mass of boulders that made a natural fortress. They advanced unchallenged to the hideout <laughs> and found that the outlaws and their horses were gone. Look there, Tonto. They've left blankets and cooking supplies. They're coming back. Is that right? Wherever they've gone, they're traveling light. What do we do, Kim Asabi? We better let Joe Marbury know those crooks are out of jail. We'll go to Boone City. Boone City! Come on, scout! Morning, Mr. Reynolds. It's a fine day, eh? Indeed it is, Joe. Indeed it is. I see you're right on the job. Yes. Good morning, gents. Good morning. Oh, get your hands up. What? It goes for you back there. Hey, some... This is a stick up and we mean business. Joe, do as he says. Don't get yourself shot. Are you crooks? Shut up. Give me that shotgun. Anyway, let's out of yelly ties. This bank's closed. Nobody get through. No one goes in or out. A little higher, Reynolds. That's better. Let you boys get the cash. Make it fast. Are you on it, Joe? Like old times, huh, Joe? No, no. Good to be seeing you again. Remember the time you helped us stick up the stage from Plainville? What's that? You mean to say you didn't know about Joe's past? Moose, moose, please. Oh, oh, sakes alive. I thought sure you'd have told your boss that you were once traveling with me. Hey, you ornery skunk. Are these crooks your friends? No, no, Mr. Andrews. Denying an old friendship? Joe, you hurt me. I'm real surprised that Reynolds don't know all about your past. Why don't you ask the sheriff about your bank guard, Reynolds? He knows Joe was once my pal. So the sheriff knows it, huh? All set, Moose. We got all the cash that's handy. Also, all the guns we saw. Right? All right, come on, then. All right, get going. I, I have a gun, Mr. Reynolds. He overlooked one in my desk. Be careful. Those men are killers. Ow! Frank, look out! Frank, think you hurt badly? I... Guess not. Well, you shouldn't have tried to shoot it out with those killers. You were just waiting for someone to open the door. Marbury, you should know their plan of operation. Mr. Reynolds. So yes. you travel with those thieves? No. No, not exactly, Mr. Reynolds. Hey, right. What's the gunplay? What happened here, Mr. Reynolds? Sheriff, I've been robbed. And I want to talk to you about it. Come in here, deputy. It's a robbery. I saw three men riding away. We'll get after him. Get some boys for a pussy. Hold on, Sheriff. Let your deputy take charge. I want to talk to you. But Mr. Reynolds. You heard what I said? Right. Deputy, go organize a posse. I'll see you later. Hi, right, sir. Frank, you're hurt. Oh, it's nothing at all. Just a scratch on the hand. Get it wrapped in my handkerchief. Sheriff, is it true Marbury traveled with crooks and that you knew it when you asked me to give him a job in my bank? Joe wasn't a crook, Mr. Reynolds. Was he with the men who tried to rob the Plainfield Sage? Answer yes or no. Well... I was, Mr. Reynolds. There's no use denying it. And you, Sheriff, you knew it. Mr. Reynolds, you knew Joe Marbury before he left town. What a fine man he was. He just had a string of hard luck. Though. I didn't know of his affiliation with crooks. And you recommended him to me without telling me when you asked me to give him a job. Oh, Mr. Reynolds. It strikes me as highly suspicious that he permitted those crooks to get inside the bank. He made no effort to shoot them. 
He probably tipped them off as to when there'd be a lot of money in the bank. Now, Mr. Reynolds... You'd better lock Marbury in jail and then get after those crooks. And I warn you, Sheriff, if you don't find them and bring them back, I'll see that the town board meets very quickly and considers your removal from office. Sheriff Perkins had no choice. He locked his friend Joe Marbury behind bars, then led the posse south in the direction the crooks had traveled after leaving the bank. It was over an hour later when the Lone Ranger rushed through a rear door of the building that combined both the jail and the sheriff's office. The guard leaped to his feet. Hold on there, mister. Put on your gun. I want to speak to your prisoner. Get your hands up. Good hit, man. It's all right. Sheriff Perkins will vouch for Perkins, us for you, Marbury, and you're behind bars. Now, as for you... Joe, I must see the sheriff. He's hitting the posse. They're after Moose Jackson's gang. Those crooks hit the bank. Yes, I know about that. The street's full of people talking about the robbery. I had a hard time getting here without being seen. Which way did the sheriff go? South. Guard, we can capture the Jackson gang. If you will help Put me, Put your we... hands up. Guard, you've got to listen to that masked man. He's the Lone Ranger. Yeah? Next thing I know, you'll be telling me he's Santa Claus. For the last time, mister, get your hands up while I take your guns or I'll shoot. Very well, my hands are up. If you want my guns, help yourself. If you're going right, I will. Stand still now. Don't move or I'll let you have it. Well, and if I move, I'll take the gun. Sorry, guard, but there's no time to waste. Help! Enough! Oh! No, you're in for it. That yell will bring men from the street. Hello's watching out in front. Uh, what, what are you looking for? His keys. I hope he has a key to your cell. You mean to let me out? Yes, I need help, Joe. You're the man to give it to me. Oh, here are the keys. One of these fits, I'll have you out in a few seconds. Hello! Hello, across the street here, yell. Penny, come this way. There you are, Joe. Hello, where's Scout? Out back by Silver. Come on, get going, Joe. Out that door. As the Lone Ranger slammed the rear door, a number of townsmen came in the front. They saw the unconscious guard in the open, empty cell. They heard a cry and hoofbeats in the rear. The men rushed to the rear and opened the door. There they go. He's got your Marbury. Open fire! There were several shots, but Tonto and the Lone Ranger, carrying Joe on his horse, got out of the line of fire beyond a building. When they drew rain, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were at the far edge of a woods. Beyond, there was an open plain on which stood the rock pile that had served as Jackson's hideout. I hoped to come here with the sheriff's posse so we could surround the rocks and move in from all sides. The sheriff's going to lose his job because of Moose Jackson and me. The outlaws are there. They can open fire as soon as we leave the cover of these trees. I'd give my life to square things for the sheriff. I'll find out if they're there. Give me a gun. Joe. Joe acted quickly. He snatched a gun from the masked man's holster and charged out of the woods toward the rock pile. He had covered half the distance when a shot rang out. Men there. Them fire, Joe. He's firing back, but he hasn't a chance. Tonto, we can't let him die without trying to help. Come on, easy, steady, fella. Cut to the left and try to get those men when they show themselves to fire at Joe. I'll go to the right. Come on, get it, scout. Joe continued forward on the run, while the Lone Ranger and Toto dashed into the open, rode at angles to the rocks, then cut back. One bullet brushed Joe's thigh. He fell, then painfully regained his feet and went ahead. He fired without hope of hitting the well-protected outlaws. He offered himself as a target, only to make the crooks expose themselves to the Lone Ranger's gunfire. Meanwhile, behind the rocks, Moose Jackson shouted, Hey, look at that man, he's fast. The one who got us the last time. Let me get a shot at that critter. Hey, watch out. I'll get him. This is it. I told him to be careful. Oh, Oh, you fool. Couldn't you see the redskin come from the other side? Yeah, I'll have to get those critters myself. Moose tried to keep his head down as he fired in three directions. Joe had fallen a second time, but redeemed his feet through sheer determination. The Lone Ranger and Tonto made hard targets of themselves by zigzagging and leaning low while they rode nearer to the rocks. Then Joe fired the last bullet in the borrowed gun, and it was lucky. It glanced off a rock and found its mark. Late afternoon found Joe in bed. He wore several bandages, and his face was tense with pain. But he managed to smile when Sheriff Perkins entered the room. Well, Joe, I'm glad you're finally awake. I've been here three times since we found you. I can't remember a thing after you. Fallen near some rocks. I got back from the chase and the town was in an uproar. 
Seems a mask man slugged the guard and took you away. And Tonto came in and told where you could be found. Oh. Well, to make it short, we got all three of the crooks. And they'll all live to do a long jail term. I'm glad. Likewise, we got back the cash they stole from the bank. Reynolds already begged my pardon for what he said and thought. He's waiting the chance to beg yours and tell you all about a new and better job. Oh, gosh, Sam, that, that's good news. It ain't all, either. There's some rewards coming your way. The Jackson gang is wanted in other places. But I, I didn't do anything. That masked man should have the reward. Oh, he don't take rewards. And he don't even take thanks. What's more, he said you were the one who got the crooks. And he wouldn't tell a fib. He is the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.